Right. So the next topic that we're going to go over is meeting roles and responsibilities. Um, so in these groups, there's, there's two roles that I would totally recommend every group have, and that's a facilitator and a note taker. And then uh, depending on the complexity of the group, uh, there's also potentially a timekeeper who keeps track of um, you know, how long each agenda item is taking, which brings me back to agendas. I, I find it helpful to include uh, the time allotted for each agenda item. And then, you know, if you go over and it's, it's good discussion, you know, you, you kind of just want to check in and be like, all right, we're getting to the end of time, but um, to include the time for each agenda item in, um, in the agenda itself, because a lot of meetings will go and you, you know, you get to the end of the meeting time allotted and you still have four agenda items. So uh, really trying to like uh, manage time well. Um, but the meeting roles and responsibilities, facilitator and note taker, who I recommend is not the same person um, because we'll get into facilitator roles. It's hard to take notes and do the other stuff. Uh, but you could also have a timekeeper. Um, you could have uh, a stack keeper and stack is basically the person who um, keeps track of whose hand is up next. And, um, you know, you don't want people to have to like, have you ever done this in a meeting where you're like, Hey, my hands up the stack keeper, um, or the facilitator. If you don't have a stack keeper, we'll be like, okay, you're next, you're next. So people don't have to keep their hands up and you just have a running list of who's next to speak. Um, we'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, yeah, and just the complexity of the group and the complexity of the meeting and everything you have to do will determine what you need. Uh, sometimes you have someone who's managing uh, chat watcher. Yeah. So like, feel free to put other roles that you've seen in the, in the chat here. Um, but yeah, at the minimum, a facilitator and a note taker who are different people. And then sometimes uh, you have a tech who's letting people into the meeting if it's on Zoom um, and handling screen share, that kind of stuff. Um, right. So facilitator responsibilities. It's like, um, today we're going to learn through doing. So, um, hopefully I model that well, what the facilitator responsibilities are. This is a little bit different because normally in consensus, uh, meetings themselves, the facilitator, their main responsibility is to make sure that everyone is heard and that everyone has a chance to speak and that you get through, uh, you know, the agenda items, but really, a consensus facilitator is doing just that. They're making sure that you're in a process that is facilitating consensus, making sure everyone's heard. Um, but we'll start from the beginning. Um, the main facilitator responsibilities, um, and oh, by the way, I have these all in notes already, so don't feel like you have to like scribble down notes. And I'm gonna share the notes with the group. Uh, everything I'm saying is pretty much in notes. Well, probably won't be, but like all these line items are in the notes. So. Uh, facilitator responsibilities, uh, number one, compiling the agenda, um, opening the meeting, asking for a note taker or other roles to be filled, uh, leading the group through agenda items, uh, creating, you know, giving a heads up when the agenda items are almost at time, unless you have a timekeeper. And I have this one in bold, but keeping track of who is next to speak, um, you know, with hands, real and virtual if you're doing Zoom. Um, you know, just paying attention, scanning the room, making sure that someone doesn't have their hand up like this, uh, and, um, making sure the meeting's staying on track, or at least I say productively straying. So it's like, as a facilitator, this is where you get into the nuance where it's like, you want to offer structure, but you don't want to be so rigid that it only allows certain types of conversation to flow or people to speak. So depending on the group. You know, you're kind of striking a balance between having structure for the meeting and also allowing creative uh, uh, creativity to flow. And another another thing that's really important is the facilitator should make sure that the meeting is inclusive and that everyone gets heard. And we're going to have a whole discussion on this today uh, because I think like meeting inclusivity um, and making sure that all types of people are heard, the introverts, the extroverts making sure that everyone has a chance to speak, um, handling, you know, social dynamics as they come up, 
uh, handling conflict, all those things. They're not just on the facilitator. So if you sign up to be a facilitator, don't feel like you have to manage all that complexity. Like things are going to arise and it's really on the entire group. If you're in a consensus group, that's not all on the facilitator, but um, as facilitator, you kind of have a little bit more agency to be like, Hey, I think we're getting off track or, you know, let's allow other people to speak that kind of thing. Um, right. And, um, Right, so those are the main facilitator responsibilities in groups that I've been part of. And really simply, you're guiding the meeting through the agenda, so you have the agenda up. And, and it doesn't mean you need to know about every single topic on the agenda. Um, sometimes it's really helpful to have, you know, whoever puts something on the agenda, you just simply, as a facilitator, you don't need to be an expert in everything that's being talked about in the meeting. You could just simply facilitate okay, we got to this agenda item on um, regenerative finance. Uh, PJ, you put that on the agenda, take it away, right? And then you step back. So there's a lot of, as facilitator, this is different because it's a workshop and I'm very uncomfortable. Uh, like, like normally when I'm facilitating, I'm, I'm trying to talk as little as possible. And I'm, I'm really trying to like get it to go around. Um, and um, just just making sure that like the discussions flowing offering gentle guidance um, so things that you uh, probably uh, in a lot of these consensus groups you might not want to do as facilitator um, and these are pretty common things so um, so in a consensus group really after someone's speaking you really just want to call on who's next unless you have a facilitation point um, Right. Um, one thing you want to do as facilitator that I found really, really helpful is you have a facilitation hat and then you have a participant hat and to really make sure those are clear. Uh, because sometimes if you're facilitating, um, you know, you could be like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, in between each one, each comment, you know, you could say uh, maybe you thought you had a facilitation point, but then you end up uh, talking as a participant and that's called jumping stack and I would highly recommend trying to avoid that and be mindful of that um, because you know it can end up with the facilitator talking a lot which is what happens in a lot of these a lot of meetings um, especially in hierarchical organizations so um, yeah please jump in if you need to offer a facilitation ro role and maybe like this is my facilitation hat and then if you're operating as a participant, um, you know, make sure you raise your hand and be like, as you call, okay, we got Jonathan and then Brittany and then myself and then Brent. Um, so people know that you're, you're acting as a participant in that case. Um, and then, you know, also just minimizing synthesis of information in between comments, unless it's needed to get back on track. And this can, this can vary because Sometimes as facilitator, you are somewhat, you know, you're, you are responsible for, um, you know, keeping track of action items and doing, there are different facilitator roles, um, but really just like minimizing them between and making sure that people um, have a chance to speak.